We are here at ZombieCon again. This time I am with Terry Alexander, a long-term horror actor, who some of you may know. Um, let's get this started way back in the day. Your first horror credit was in 1973 in The Werewolf of Washington. What memories do you have from working on that film? Well, uh, we were working at JFK Airport, uh, and it was a night shoot, and uh, I was playing actually a soldier guard type. And I was uh, had a couple of lines, and the werewolf came and he attacked me, uh, and uh, I I kind of blew it because uh, his whiskers were tickling me as I was biting my neck, and he he popped the blood spurt, and I, I was laughing. So we had to do it over again, man. That was my first film in, 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 in the horror movie. So that was my big memory. I, I'm, I didn't, I'm not going to blow it anymore, though, I promise you. <laughs> how, how did you get involved with that film? Did you just go out and audition for that movie, or did you... Yeah, it was an audition. Just It's an audition com coming out of New York City. Yeah. Okay. Well, from, I guess, humble beginnings then, you go on in 1985 to work on Day of the Dead, George yes. Romero's film, which is a horror classic by pretty much all regard. Yes. Um, how did you get involved with that film? Again, uh, jo I heard George Romero was coming into town uh, looking for someone who could do a Caribbean accent. And uh, I can do a Caribbean accent because I spent a lot of time in the Caribbean. And uh, he came and I, he presented this, this wonderful monologue and uh, I, I read it outside the audition where they were auditioning people. And I came into the room and I said, hey, George, this is a great, this is literate, wonderful monologue. And, and can I just have overnight just to work on it, just to play with it? And he said, okay, sure. And I was shocked because it's the first time I've ever done anything like that. And I came back the next day and uh, did the monologue for him and he loved it. So that's how I got that job. Uh, originally, Day of the Dead had a much bigger scope and uh, it was a more extensive project, but it was shortened down. Did you ever see the more extensive version of it, or it had already been shortened down by the time you got involved? Uh, it was shortened down by the time I got involved. I, They gave me a, a script that I read uh, later on to see what it was what it had come down to. It was really long. Uh, it was epic size. Uh, but the way he shortened it made it sharper made the characters live a little better, and you got that classic style. I mean, you, you, as an actor, what is it like to be in a film that's regarded as a classic? You know, horror fans love Day of the Dead. It's a hugely popular film amongst that community. Mm -hmm. What is it like? Is it gratifying? Do you, do you embrace that sort of? Oh, it's a heavyweight compliment, uh, and I love every second of it. Uh, to see young guys like you coming out after this long time and saying, hey man, your character was uh, very special. It changed me just a little bit. Uh, that's what we work for as artists. And it's, a, again, a great, great compliment. I love it. I mean, I guess one of the things as an actor, do you ever worry about, you know, being um, sort of pigeonholed or whatever term is the right one in sort of a genre? Because you've, you've done a lot of horror work. Do you ever worry that people might just be like, oh, that's Terry, he's a horror actor or something like that? I wish they would. <laughs> <laughs> Any way you can get work? Any way you can get it, baby. Yeah. That's the name of the game out here in show business. Yeah. Sometimes you do things and nothing comes to you at all. And it's a great uh, character, a great piece of work. So uh, it, it's, it, it depends. You know, I, I enjoyed it and I got some work from it. Uh, but uh, pigeonhole is, uh, I've seen guys go 20 years on one yeah. pigeonhole project, yeah. so you never know, baby. Take whatever you can get. Yes, baby. Um, you were also in The Horror Show, mm -hmm. aka House 3. What was it like working on a Sean S. Cunningham project? Well, that was a difficult one because they changed the director three times. And uh, we had to find a way to get through it. Uh, and I think the writer finally directed some of it, too. So that was a difficult project, you know, when you change uh, artistic people in, in midstream. It's, it raises an interesting issue. You talk about, like, George Romero giving you sort of that flexibility to experiment with the monologue and stuff. Um, what are some of your favorite directors you've worked with? Is George Romero amongst that group? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. 
It's interesting. I, I wanted to paint that uh, picture uh, because back when we did this movie, there weren't many writer directors. Yeah. You write it, they give it to the director, he plays with it, messes with it, and the writers sometimes get angry. Now they got a lot of writer directors, bunches of them. So it was for me the great experience was to watch George, having rewrote written it, then leave it and go right to a director's head and put it together. Yeah. That is rare. That is very special. Uh, as an actor, what exactly you know separated the good ones? Was it that they give you more flexibility to play with the role? Was that what made it a better experience, or? Or was it just the material was better? What exactly do you as an actor look for in the projects you work on? Like, it, what makes a good project for you? Well, it's a harmonic kind of thing, you know, because sometimes you get a project, director doesn't know how to direct, uh, the cinematographer takes over, he directs it, kind of. Uh, Writer-directors don't want you to go far from their lines or strict. They just say, no, 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 make it more important. And you say, what is that? You know, so it, it's uh, not, it's an ex excellent compliment for George to, again, leave that writing form and become a great director. And, and that's what we want, that's what great directors do. They compliment your character, they stay in touch with your character, they know where your character is every second, and they bring out some extra things for you. That's great. Uh, one of the bigger projects we worked on was Conspiracy Theory with Richard Donner, Mel mm -hmm. Gibson, mm -hmm. Julia Roberts was in that as well. Um, how did it affect your acting style to work on such a massive project with so many, you know, notable people in it? Oh man, was that a trip, man. Uh, Dick Donner is an uh, old school director. Research, yeah. Yeah, professor type, you know, just big booming voice, man. And you get out there with him and he, he gives you the credit to know what you're doing and we were shooting one scene in the car and uh, he says, listen guys, we're only going to shoot this one way. I don't want to see anybody back of anybody's head. So you go and you shoot it like I'm talking to you and you go back and forth like that. It was wonderful, man. I, 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 I had a great experience working with that and uh, I loved every second of it, man, because it was big budget. Uh, the food you got was better. Everything was better, man. You know, uh, and, and Mel was uh, really on his game then. Uh, uh, he, was, <laughs> he was about to direct some things after that, and uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was definitely during that period uh, where he was doing pretty well for oh, himself. Yeah. Since then, things might have gotten well, a little bit know, crazy. But. Yeah, a little bit crazy. You know, you get older sometimes, and you lose your edge a little bit sometimes. Or your mind. Or your you know? mind. Oh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But he was on his game then, yeah, man. So working with him was like, wow, man. We make up stuff because it needed it, he saw that it needed it in the scene, and then they say, okay, keep that. I mean, with like uh, Day of the Dead, it became a horror classic sort of after the fact, but going into conspiracy theory, that's like a massive project. Is there any sort of like, you know, pressure you feel to like raise your acting level to keep it in line with everyone involved with it. I mean, do, did that sort of weigh in on how you approach the project? Not for this one, because they gave me a lot of time to work with the material. They gave me almost a month wow. before I shot. So That's that great, gave yeah. me some time to work with the wheelchair and to do this and to do that. You know, usually you get a couple days and you're out there shooting, so you're not as secure. So for me, it was my, my dynamite, man. I was raring to work with Mel and said, hey, Julia, how you doing, baby? Let's work, <laughs> you know, and uh, they were all sweet people at, at that point. Uh, Sean, I was at, uh, Patrick Stewart was in that as well? Yeah, I saw Patrick there on the set, man, and I'd seen him do a Shakespeare thing in a park in New York, and I, I just walked up to him and said, hey, man, your Shakespeare was dynamite. And from that point on, we got along. What was it wor like working with Patrick Stewart? Because, like, I've heard Will Wheaton speak about, you know, when they were on Star Trek together and how Patrick Stewart was really sort of supportive and really thoughtful in helping him as an actor. Oh, yeah. Did you experience any of that? Oh, yeah, he's easy and cool. We like easy, cool people. That's right. Uh, because uh, film acting is acting in a vacuum anyway. It's, it's a sort of when you, they turn around on you, you can have a script girl read your line. So it's acting in a vacuum. So when somebody is helpful and warm and open and helps you, oh man, it's the greatest. It's, it's, it's the very best. Man. You've obviously done both some like more indie work and some mainstream studio stuff like Conspiracy Theory. Um, obviously, the food's better. You're going to get some bigger names attached yeah, yeah, to the, the yeah, studio yeah. stuff. Yeah. But do you ever feel 
the constrictions that other like directors sometimes run to studios where they are very rigid in how they shoot productions. They're very uh, focused on the audience that they're trying to sell it to as opposed to independent film where there's more like experimentation. Um, how, which, which, what as an actor do you enjoy more? Do you enjoy just these big projects that you know everyone in the world is going to see or do you like the projects more that you can play around with more, sort of mold the character more to what you want? Oh yeah, well of course, you just said it all. I think you just answered that question. Uh, because uh, I did a lot of TV along the way, and TV is fast. Yeah. Uh, get on your mark. If you get your lines right, you might get one or two takes, and that's it. You know, they're not yeah. into exploring your character. Right, right. And uh, independent films uh, uh, is often an exploration in the first place. So guys are just, again, they put on that the beautiful harmonic kind of relationship with, between actor and director and writer. And I, I love it. I love independent stuff. Love well, it. There yeah. you have it. Um, where, what, what do you have coming up? Let's start with that. Oh, man, what do I have coming up? Last thing I did was a television series called Saints and Sinners. It was on uh, Fox about, oh, yeah, I do uh, yeah, a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, nothing's coming out so far. I, I, you know, sometimes on the, you work. On the lookout for the next thing. Sometimes you work, sometimes you don't. That's true. It's show business. Where can people keep tabs on what's coming out with you? Do you have a website or do you have No, I don't have a or? website yet. I'm just getting into the convention circuit here and everybody's talking to me about websites and what I can do and how I can do it. We, we want to sell you. Oh, we, yeah, want, we want more Terry Ex oh, Alexander out man. there, you know? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, yeah. son. I appreciate this, man. Yeah. So it's all good, man. I'll come up with it soon. You know. okay. I'll well, catch up with the technical stuff soon. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> um, again, Terry, it's been a pleasure to speak with you. My uh, pleasure. Hope your convention is wonderful, and hopefully we see more of you in the future. All right. I, I appreciate it. Thank you Thank so you. much. T-1000 can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.